In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing how I pick the starting values of the image. Um, later on, I'm going to be fine, really fine-tuning them and doing a lot of work with luminosity masking, but I like to do that after I dodge and burn and clone so it doesn't bring out all kinds of you know, contrast of, the, of un details I didn't want to bring out. So to start, I usually like to use channel mixer and black and white adjustment layer to pick that. And I'm also going to be showing you some methods for cloning and um, how I'm going to be removing the background wrinkles kind of in a cheap, quick way. So first off, we'll just review. This was the uh, original raw file with camera raw defaults and then I did a couple of conversions to bring it to this to kind of pull out as much detail as I could so that my uh, adjustments will uh, so, so the file will be able to handle my aggressive adjustments I'm planning on doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, just copy this so I can have a you know way to toggle back to see how my progress is going and the first thing I'm going to do is remove the background. So normally you wouldn't want to use quick select tool to do this because it um, doesn't create very good clean edges, but since I'm going to be replacing the background with such a similar color, it gives us more uh, room to cheat like that. So I'm just going to kind of click and drag, keep clicking and dragging all the until the entire background is selected here. And then I'm going to go in and if you hold down Alt, uh, you can toggle it to removing selection. So you kind of, if you just click it adds, if you hold down Alt and click it'll remove. And then you can use the um, bracket key is to change the size of the brush. So I got a kind of quick selection there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to invert it, Control shift i So now I've got the man selected, and now I'm going to click the mask button down here. And that should add a layer mask that has him selected. So now underneath it, I'm going to create a new layer. And with my brush tool, I'm going to pick a light color from the background, just a kind of standard light color. And then I'm going to hit X to shift to the uh, to switch my foreground background color, and then I'm going to select a darker color. So I'm going to pick this one. Now I'm going to pick the radial the gradient tool and pick the radial option. And I'm going to draw out from his face a line, so it'll create a gradient from light to dark, expanding outwards. And let's see how this looks. Now the edge we can see there's some areas that need to work. And I'm going to use um, CS5's refine edge tool a bit here. So I'm going to pick mask edge. And then I'm going to do Smart Radius, which helps a lot. It's a really kind of cool, cool tool to use. It helps a lot. So here's the before I did that, and the after just kind of brings in the edges a little to catch that detail. And I noticed down right in here, it might not even be that noticeable, but uh, it's brought in some of the, the edge in here that I don't want. So while you're on re Refine Mask, if you hold down Alt and then Paint, you can say, OK, don't refine this area. I'm going to back to the original selection there. Okay. Okay, so I'm happy with how that looks, as opposed to our original background with the wrinkled sheet. I don't think the Photoshop did a good job there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, use the channel mixer to choose my starting values, but first I want to see what I'm working with by checking out our channels we have. So here's our composite RGB. Here's just the red channel, which is kind of a little ghosty looking. And some people like to use these values to, to help retouch skin, but I don't like how it looks. It look, kind of softens it up and gives it a little bit of a Photoshop look. And here's our green, which is usually a little bit contrasting. And then here's blue, which kind of is a more darker skin tone, lighter eye kind of contrast. I like to use that a lot. So I like the green and the blue a lot. Probably mostly green with a little hint of blue is what I'm going to do, it looks like. So now I'm going to go back, create a new adjustment layer, channel mixer. And I'm going to click the monochrome checkbox. And then I'm going to say zero red, because we said we didn't like red. And mostly green, so I'm going to say 60% green and then 40% blue. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a little bit more blue. And you can go above 100% a little bit, just a little. So now, I'm because I don't want a black and white image, what I'm going to do is tell Photoshop, OK, I like these values, but I don't want to make it black and white. So keep the original color, just use these values by changing the blending mode to luminosity. Here's our before and after, and I like that better. It's a little bit more detail and stuff. Now I'm going to create a new, um, but let's see, in the hat, I'm really losing detail. No, I think it's okay. Probably a tiny bit, but it's, it looks all right to me. And then the shirt, it does seem to be making the shirt a little bit lighter. 
which I don't think I like actually. So what I'm going to do is use a black and white adjustment layer now. Also set to luminosity. And then I'm going to click this scrubber, uh, scrubbing thing right here. And then I can just click and drag to darken colors and image. Like I could, if I wanted to bring up the reds in his skin, I could do that. But I'm not, just like the, the blue here. So I'm going to darken that just a little bit. I like how that looks. And if you notice the banding back here, that's because of the, um, the, the way the Photoshop previews images. If we go to 100%, it's a lot less banding, but there's still a little bit. So now that I see there is a little bit of banding, I'm going to add some noise to this background I did. But just to, let me finish off grouping these two adjustments here. So here's before my starting values and after. And I, I like how that looks. It brings out some more detail, just makes it more interesting. So now I'm going to create a new layer above the background. Oops. I'm going to hold down Alt and click the new layer icon. And I'm going to create a new soft light layer filled with 50% gray. And then I'm going to go filter. First zoom in here so I can see the banding. It might not even be visible on the, uh, on the video, but right in here I can see some slight banding. So I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise. And then I'm going to bring it down to probably just like... 1.5%, maybe even less than that, maybe just 1%. And that took care of the noise. I don't see it anymore. Okay, so next I'm going to be doing some cloning now that I have my values. Because if you notice here, well, see, now if you see the banding, that's just again just because of the preview. If we go in and zoom, you can see it's not there because we added the noise. So just ignore the banding when you see the, the the preview version here. And if you can see in the skin texture and stuff, it has brought out some detail. Like this mark right here, before it was a little less noticeable. And now it's more. So that's why I like to do that first and then clone afterwards. So I'm going to actually create three different layers for cloning and healing. One set to darken, one set to lighten, and one set to normal, a bit normal. So now I'm going to pick the uh, healing brush or the uh, yeah healing brush tool, and I'm going to go in here. And when I'm I'm going to be using the um, normal one, the normal layer, because I want the detail to be uh, the texture to be brought over without any special treatment. And I'll show you about that later. So when when I ever do that, whenever you do this, you click along like the same line you're doing. And I like to use the preview that comes with CS4 or CS5. It kind of shows up under your brush to help me match it up. And then I can just kind of go and click their drag. And do we get some darkness? We did. So see how there is darkness there? Right here. I don't like that. So instead of using the normal one, I'm going to use the lightning one. So it'll only lighten and not darken. So let's see how that goes. There we go. Much better. OK. So we got rid of that. And I'm going to start going through, and I'm going to go back to normal. And whenever you, if you're going to be cloning along an edge, you can't really do it like this because it'll do something funky. So what you got to do is pick a nearby edge, and then bring down your match until it matches. And then you can, as long as your edge matches up, then you can uh, heal along it like that. And let's see here. And so now I'm going to um, use the normal. Um, Normal, normal healing here. I'm gonna click along there to do that, but I don't want to. I don't want it to, to totally disappear like that. So after I do it, I want to hit Control Shift F, and you have to do that immediately after. If you zoom or move a layer or anything, it won't work anymore. So it has to be immediate, and then you can fade the last adjustment you did. So I just want to make it until it's just not noticeable, like that. I'm gonna do that. Same thing with this wrinkle here. Take it down a little bit, just a little bit, so I'll have a little bit easier time later with Dodge and Burn. So I'm just doing like the really the the, the most harsh, harsh uh, contrasty stuff that would be a pain to dodge. Control Shift F, bring it back a bit. Now I'm just going to kind of go through and do some quick uh, cloning here. And I'm doing this so far with Lighten, just because I'm doing a lot of lightning stuff.
here's a place I'd use darken because I couldn't seem to get a good result with either the normal and lighten definitely wouldn't work so I'm just going and telling it okay only darken I don't want to see any lightning only darkening Okay, and now for some stuff you just have to use the clone stamp because the healing brush is handy but it doesn't give you as much control. So I, I like to paint in with a little bit of a low opacity. So now I'm going to be going and just doing some lightning here because I can just go up right up to the edge. Oh, i got to pick a uh, current and below. Okay, and I think that's uh, pretty much all I'm going to do there. Here's the, uh, let me just group these, and you can see the, let me get in 100%. This is before um, the cloning and healing, and there's after. So these are just kind of like lightening up some of the more extreme stuff. Took out a lot of the, like, lint and stuff on the shirt that would just draw the eye. So uh, next tutorial is going to be Dodge and Burn.